Hello again, minions, it's Wheezy. Today, I'm gonna to tell you everything that you need to know about upgrading storage on your PlayStation 5. This is gonna cover all the options that you have, walk you through how to install them, how they work, and some performance comparisons between them so you can make the best decision for your money. So let's go take a look. Okay, so before I jump off the tripod and show you guys how to install and set all this stuff up, first I'm gonna walk you through the options we are gonna cover for the storage solutions. The one that we're not really gonna cover is an external kind of high-speed USB drive, just because, like a thumb drive, because I honestly, for the money, I don't really think you're gonna get the utility you want out of that. If you're gonna expand your storage for super cheap, I think that our first solution is gonna be better than getting like a thumb drive, but I'm gonna cover everything from our cheapest solution up. And the first thing I'm gonna cover is an old school external platter hard drive. These, this is a three terabyte, you can get four terabyte. You know, you can get, well, you can get bigger ones than that. You can get six, eight, 10 terabytes. Um, but for value for money, the sweet spot right now is three terabyte hard drives are about $40 you can get consistently get refurbed three terabyte hard drives for about $40. Um, I'm gonna have links and stuff for all this down below so you can check it out, pick it up. Four terabytes are gonna set you back closer to $50, but as far as storage for solution, that's why I'm saying I'm not really gonna talk about thumb drives because the amount that you're gonna pay for a thumb drive that has like a three terabytes, if you could get one, um, is not gonna be comparable. Versus, and you're gonna pair this hard drive with one, one of these which is a three and a half, I won't just throw it, <laughs> three and a half inch uh, SATA hard drive enclosure. That will support not only full size drives, but it also support uh, smaller hard drives like laptop hard drives or SSDs. They will all plug into this because it's just a SATA enclosure. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about the SSD solution. So you can also get smaller ones, but um, yeah. So this, about $40 for these ter three terabytes and then $20 for the enclosure. So for $60, you're gonna be adding three terabytes of storage to your PS5. Now, because it's external, you'll be able to play PS4 and earlier games off of it. Uh, I say and earlier, they don't really do PS3 games, so you'll be able to play PS4 games off of it. PS5 games, you'll be able to copy to it so that you don't have to re-download them or reinstall them from the disc or whatever, so you can copy them back and forth. The copy process is reasonably fast. Um, but that's what you're gonna be using this for, is basically having storage. So if you have a game, like say call, a Call of Duty game that's 140 gigabytes, and it's taking up a bunch of your hard drive, and then you're not gonna play it for a couple of months, but you don't wanna go through and either re-download it or reinstall it from the disc later on and then re-download all the updates, you can just copy it off to your external hard drive onto your three terabytes that are just sitting there for dirt cheap, play your new games, and then when you're ready to pull those games back, just take, you know, fire it up. It takes a few minutes for it to copy it back over and you're right back into it. So that's a good cheap option for storage like that. Um, the next step up from that is getting an external SSD. So it's basically just a more expensive but faster version of that. So it's the same thing when you have an SSD in an external enclosure, um, which is that it will be, uh, it doesn't work as internal storage. You won't be able to play, come on, focus, focus. Yeah, so this is, you know, a, a SATA SSD. Um, you won't be able to play P PlayStation 5 games directly off of it because it won't have the throughput that it needs to natively for that. But if you want, say, your PS4 games that you're going to be using or, you know, to load faster or you want to be able to copy your PS5 games to and from your external storage faster, the SSD would be the option for you. If you have more money, or maybe you have an, a SATA SSD lying around that you didn't, that you don't use, like from an old computer. Um, so this can be a good option. Same concept, even though it's a smaller enclosure, uh, it's gonna be about 20 bucks for that. Although you can take that same SATA SSD and plug it into this bonk, this chunk, bonker, this chunker if you want to. Um, but if you just wanna go the SSD route and get one that's specifically for a small SSD drive, it's the same kind of, kind of cost, about 20 bucks for that enclosure. For like a one terabyte SSD SATA drive, you are gonna, if you find a really screaming deal, you might find one for 60 bucks, but you're looking at probably closer to 80 or $90 for an, a one terabyte SSD versus about 40 bucks for three terabytes of a big old hard drive. So 
Keep that in mind, That's that depends on what your budget is and what your preference is for loading times. Like I said, you'll, you'll see improvements in loading times for PS4 games, for PS5 games, again, it's just gonna be copy times. Then the next step up from that is gonna be the official, unofficial PlayStation solution. Unlike the Xbox, PlayStation hasn't branded its own storage, but this, for instance, is a Samsung one terabyte drive with heat sink that is, that is certified basically as being compatible with PS5. I don't even know if it says on the box, but anyway, I'm gonna put links down below for SSD options that are fully rated as and tested as being PS5 native compatible so that you can play PS5 games off of this. Now, um, a one terabyte stick like this, this one when I picked it up right now, you can get it, they're on sale, but I think this is probably the price you're gonna find it for right now. This is about $170 for this one terabyte, right? So you're talking about, you know, at least double the cost of an external drive, but this is storage you can play PS5 games directly off of. So depending on what your budget is and what you really want out of your gaming experience, if you want to have, it's not really two terabytes because with the one terabyte that's built into the PS5, a lot of that, you know, the amount that's taken up by the operating system install and stuff like that. You got about 700 gigabytes or so on your PS5 natively. Add an extra terabyte to that. Um, you increase that for like a two, let's see, for like a two terabyte stick, it's get, you know, it's gonna basically at least double in price. So the, you're gonna probably be looking at 400, $350 to $400 for two terabytes uh, of storage, which at which point you're talking about basically the cost of another PS5 for that. Um, but if you just wanna have that storage in there natively so that you can install a bunch of PS5 games and just fire them all up whenever you want, if that's something that you're willing to pay for, then this is gonna be the solution for you. So I'm gonna walk you through how all of these install, um, how they work, and I'm gonna also show performance comparisons on how they work in loading times in games and stuff like that. So um, let's hop off the tripod and go take a look at that. All right, so I'm off the tripod. I'm gonna walk you through the process of installing your additional storage into the PS5. For the external storage, it's gonna be very straightforward. We're gonna to to do a little bit of PlayStation surgery for the internal storage, so that'll probably be helpful. Um, if you're a little nervous about doing it, it's really not gonna be hard. Um, so I'll show you and walk you through all of that. So let's switch around and I'll walk you through how we do this. All right, so here we've got our PS5. Now, for the external solutions, I've already got a hard drive uh, installed and plugged into this one. This is a three terabyte external hard drive. Again, this, I think this is the same enclosure as the one that I showed, but very similar enclosure. I have one for my Xbox as well, and there's also one out on my Xbox Series S. So I have quite a few of these because it's such an affordable solution for external storage. So this is where I store games like PS4 games that I want to play on here, like God of War. Um, or, you know, uh, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Forbidden West is a PS5 game, but... So then if I've got like a game that I don't want to have on the internal, internal hard drive because I need that space for new games, I can copy it off of here. So like Call of Duty Vanguard when I'm not really feeling like playing it because it's crap. I can copy it off of here and then I don't have to download. I can just copy it back when I need it to. So to install that, it's very easy. You've got these USB ports in the back. One of these is taken up by a Bluetooth dongle for my official PS5 wireless headset, which is not great, but you know, it needs a dongle too, which is irritating. But there are these two USB super speed ports. You can see that they are blue, which is the correct coloring. And then you'll see that they also have the little SS logo for super speed. Now there are ports on the front. Um, this USB three port is rated as super speed. I don't believe this other port, this other USB port is, this is for connecting controllers and charging them and updating them. Um, so if you buy an external enclosure that connects via USB-C, these are USB-A, um, then you could plug it in the front, but honestly, for aesthetic reasons, you're probably just gonna wanna plug it right in the back. Easy peasy, all you gotta do is plug it in there. Um, same concept for the external SSD solution. If you want faster loading times on PS4 games or faster copy times, you just plug it in the back. You just plug it right in the USB back there. Bingo bongo and it'll have you set it up and format it and all that stuff. One important thing to note about the PS5 is it will not allow you to have two external storage devices hooked up at the same time. It will tell you you can only use one, so you can't even plug them both in and leave them available. You would have to go and unplug one and plug the other one in if you wanted to use different ones. So if you're going for like a mass storage solution like this, just keep that in mind, You'll, you get one, <laughs> external device on the PS5 that it'll recognize. 
The Series X doesn't do it. You can plug in, you know, there's two ports back there. You can plug in two devices and it'll recognize them both at the same time. I don't know why they did that, but it's important to note if you're using the external storage solution. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna show you through is how to install the internal storage. This is what you can actually play PS5 games off of. And we're gonna have to take this bad boy down and uh, pull his case apart and install this. It's not gonna be that difficult, but it is a bit more, a bit more complicated than the Xbox approach. It is a bit more complicated than the Xbox approach, Xbox approach which is takes this module and just stick it in the back. <laughs> um, so this is cheaper because it's kind of DIY, but I'll walk you through it. Um, I, I, am, I do have another video on Xbox Series X and S, external storage solutions, if you are interested in that. Um, but you're here for the PS5, so let's crack this bad boy open and get that drive installed. All right. <clears throat> so I haven't read any directions on this uh, because I don't want to, because honestly, this ought to be really simple. <laughs> I've seen generally how it's done. I got my SSD. All I should need is a Phillips screwdriver to attach the NVMe drive inside the console. And then really all I gotta do is figure out how to take the shell off of this thing. So oh, I am gonna need to be able to take the bottom screw off of this. So I do have another flathead in here. So let's oh, flip this upside down ungracefully. There's screw holding the bottom plate on. So I'm just taking that right off. All right, so we're gonna grip it down here by the disc drive, pull up on this corner and then peel it back, it says. So brace it. All right, so it does come down just a little bit and slide off. That's not too bad. You just grip it down here and pull that off. Although this, this step already has been 100 times more stressful than just plugging that module into the Series X, just saying. All right, so the SSD is gonna go right here in this bay. It's just a Phillips head screw. It's apparently really cranked on there. All right, we're gonna remove that. Put it right here in our tray. It has a little lip there, so it comes right out. So there is another screw here. This is the retaining screw for the SSD. So we'll take that out. And it's just, oh, there's a, <laughs> that little metal piece is the spacer for the SSD. So depending on what size SSD you get, it's got different mounting holes. So eventually you might be able to buy a smaller form factor SSD um, as of right now, I'm pretty sure these full-size M.2s are, are the only real form factor available, but I'm glad that they built that in so that it's, I won't say future-proof, but so that you can actually install different SSDs in the future. Oh, okay, that's actually a smaller, a smaller form factor than I thought. I don't know how many millimeters it is, but I guess it'll show us based on where we install it, so... You can see down there, if I don't use the brightest mode of my flashlight, down there, that's where you're gonna install it. So basically the way M.2 SSDs install is you just slide it into the slot and then they basically just lay down in place and then you screw them in. So this is the 80 mil slot. So this is an 80 millimeter SSD. So we're just gonna make sure it slots in there. Got a little click and you'll see that when an M.2 is slotted into place, it wants to kind of stand up here. So once it kind of snaps in, it's gonna try and stand up. That's why we have this retaining screw. Go ahead and put the spacer back down in that little 80 mil slot for this drive. Gently press that SSD down into place and screw it back in. So now with that screw installed, your SSD is not trying to come forward. It is firmly in place there. I'm gonna put the lip of this cover back in. 
apparently. <laughs> Come on, get in there. There we go. Get this screw back in. Now the M.2 is installed. So to put the panel back on, I assume we're just gonna set it back on there and slide it gently back up into place. Right, nice little satisfying snap. Okay, I'm gonna flip it upside down here and reinstall the bottom stand. It just kind of hooks on the back there. Is that? Apparently this is not a captive screw, so keep that in mind. It fell out of the base plate onto my floor. Glad I didn't lose that. Come on guys, captive screws. <laughs> All right, so the stand is installed there. So now the PS5 is reassembled. All we gotta do is plug all the extra shit back in. Power, HDMI, Ethernet, my external storage drive, and then my little dongle from my PS5. Headphones, and that's it. E easy peasy. I mean, again, not as easy as the Series X where I took a terabyte, plugged it in that fast. <laughs> But there it is, that's the uh, install for the PS5 hard drive. So let's go fire it up and take a look. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you the loading comparisons between the different external storage solutions, well, and the internal. And this isn't super scientific, and because the only game I really had that was an older generation game that I could test this with consistently across them was Modern Warfare Remastered. Since it's based on an older game, you're not going to see as dramatic a change, but you get what you expect, which is that the internal cards are are faster. In this case, because I think of the size of the game, the external SSD is just about as fast as the internal storage. Um, obviously, that won't be the case with more modern games. Um, and, of course, the external platter hard drive is significantly slower, uh, even in an older game like this. So... Really, this is what you'd expect to see uh, on an older game. And again, the reason we're using an older game for a comparison is because you cannot play a newer generation game off of the external memory, even if it's an SSD. Um, but the results that we've seen here is what we expect. Your slowest loading times in-game are going to come from the external hard drive. Um, but next, let's go ahead and take a look at the comparisons of the copy times, since if you're using external storage, that's most likely what you're going to be concerned with versus load times in games. So real briefly, let's just look at what happens when you install the M.2 SSD. The PlayStation 5 will immediately recognize that the internal one has been installed. It'll ask you to format it or to turn your PlayStation back off. Obviously, if you did this on purpose, you're going to want to format it. It goes really quickly, and then once that's done, it'll load into the dashboard, and you'll be able to immediately start using the internal storage. Uh, here you can see it'll say where you can change the default install location in case you want all your new games to be installed to that SSD instead of the built-in storage. Um, so after it's installed in the console, the software setup portion is actually painless. The hardware install, obviously, a little bit more involved, but here if you see if we go into the storage settings, that we have the, contour, the internal console storage listed, and then below that you have the M.2 SSD storage listed. So this is the other internal storage. Um, and if you want to install USB, USB external storage, it's this simple. Once you plug it in, it'll recognize it, and then it'll say, hey, do you want to format this? You'll say yes. It'll format it, it processes quick, and then there it is listed in your storage options. So again, you can only have one of those um, external storages at a time on the PlayStation, which kind of sucks, but you know, how many do you really need, especially if you've got three terabytes out there. So uh, here I'm gonna show you how the copy process works, and then I'm gonna also pop up 
uh, some statistics on what I measured at these as the internal to external copy times and vice versa. The results here were actually kind of surprising. I did a similar video for my uh, Xbox Series X and I found that the copy to and from times were pretty much identical, which is kind of what you'd expect. On the PS5, that has not seemed to be the case. Um, so I got some interesting results here. Uh, I'm gonna break down for you. Um, and this, again, isn't an exhaustive comparison. Like I didn't go through multiple games and run multiple tries and, and stuff like that. But I did, I did get this to be repeatable the couple of times I did do it. When you're copying from the, I used Modern Warfare Remastered, the game that we did for the loading. So 75 gigabytes uh, of data being copied from the internal storage to the external hard disk drive, which is the platter hard drive. It is a 10 minute and 17 second copy, which is pretty sizable. Um, from the external drive back to the internal drive, it's even longer, 12 minutes and 16 seconds. And this is actually what I found consistently is that copying things from the internal drive out was faster consistently than copying things back to the internal drive. I'm not entirely sure why that is, uh, but that seems to be the case. If you're using an SSD that's external, then copying 75 gigabytes from internal to external only took five minutes and eight seconds, so roughly half the time. But then copying back to internal took about almost twice as long, nine minutes and 34 seconds. So for some reason, copying back to internal storage, again, significantly slower. Um, and then copying from the internal storage to the expansion card was a blazing fast 52 seconds, which is about what you'd expect for the throughput you're gonna get in this card. But copying from the expansion card back to internal, five minutes and 24 seconds. Like that is huge. I have no idea why it is that copying from external to internal memory is so slow. Maybe it's got to compete with what's being run for the operating system and maybe it just throttles that for some reason. But copying off the internal drive uh, is significantly faster than copying to the internal drive. So I'd recommend if you're going to be doing this primarily for copies, um, that download stuff to your internal storage if you have space and then copy it out <laughs> because that will be faster than trying to copy it to your internal storage. Again, again, you're getting the performance improvements you would expect here, right? As you go up in performance on your storage device, you are getting faster copies, um, but definitely some weird results here uh, from the PlayStation 5. All right, well, that's everything that you need to know about upgrading storage on your PlayStation 5. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. If you did, you can leave me a like. If you didn't like that, whenever I tend to ramble, maybe you didn't like that. Give me a dislike. Leave a comment down below if there's something that I missed or something that you have questions. Um, subscribe if you want more stuff like this from me. I mostly do gameplay because I'm a gamer, but I'm also a giant nerd, so I love the hardware side of it too. And with YouTube and captions and stuff like that, I always love sharing with you guys anything that I know about things that can improve your gaming setup as a whole. All right, I will see you guys in the next one.